Well, hey, folks, uh, we're here in the Red Earth Production Studios. Mitch has stopped by. We we got uh, Game 7s uh, in there. We're just going to chat a little bit. High school season. High school season. It's been a little rough. And fun. It's been both. I mean, yes. we've, we, we've been fortunate enough on some Friday Night Lights to see some uh, big-time scores and then some big-time hitters uh, and players play. Because we haven't been able... And, and it's tough because we, being youth baseball talk, uh, we haven't been out at any events because of the rain. So, you know, it's been kind of, hmm. Yeah. And, and honestly, I feel like there's kind of a hole here, Mitch. <laughs> so we want to say hello, but so we, we, we talk a little high school. And, and there's some teams that are surprising. Um, in fact, I'm going to do this. Because I think it's uh, it's good, but um, your boys over at Timberland, it's been an up and down season all all, all year, right? It has. It's uh, it reminds me a little bit of what the Blues are doing. They win a few games, they lose a few games, win a few games. They, I don't think they have an identity over there right now on who they are as a as a as a team, um, because they're going out and competing hard against some of these these top teams, and they kind of let down against some teams that they should beat. I think it's interesting um, here. Uh, this was from today. You had the new coaches poll. This is the coaches poll from the Missouri High School Baseball Coaches Association. So I think, and they do each class. So I think this is always neat. So we'll throw a little bit of this out here, right? Yeah. Um, class five, Glendale's number one out of Springfield, and they are for real. Glendale's a good baseball team. Uh, Willard number two. So. And Camdenton, the top three cl- uh, teams in the coaches' poll are all Southwest Missouri. There's some good baseball being, being played down there. When we went down to Branson uh, last year, that, that that showed. Yeah. Because uh, we had, you know, we haven't gone down there and played any of those teams, uh, you know, from that Springfield area or you know surrounding spots. Yeah. It's always been as you know maybe to Jefferson County area or you know further up north but uh we haven't gone down there and that branson tournament exposed some kids that wow factor team i'm sure probably feeds into some of these programs because of what they draw from and they're they were they're good yeah yep and obviously there's more teams and um, zumwalt south number four team uh they got zumwalt east at number eight and we're that's the matchup we're gonna see today so we're gonna throw this out real quick a uh, little bit today um but uh, looking forward to that matchup. East has been reeling. Um, Ford Zumwalt South is five, uh, three and three in their last six games. Um, so it'll be interesting. Zumwalt East just got uh, they they lost on Saturday uh, to St. Charles West. So this ought to be interesting. I think both these teams coming off of uh, uh, I think what I think South just came off a win um, over uh, North Point. Mm-hmm. And they beat Hazelwood West and North Point over the weekend, but they lost uh, to Westminster. And um, I'm trying to remember the other team; can't remember exactly. So that's your. And then Helias Catholic, Carney, aren't those Middle State? Uh, I, uh, Helias, I know. Helias is, is Jeff Columbia, City, yeah, Jeff, Jeff City, City area. area. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, there's also the Washington Blue Jays. Big, it, they're they're at number seven. Washington is really good. So you got three teams in the top ten from the. GAC Central. They're good. Uh, I'm excited about that game tonight. Uh, that's two top tens, the fives and the eight seed yeah. there. Um, and the two guys that are on the bump are probably the you know what's keeping that that team alive. Uh, Carter Cox and uh, uh, Lucas McGill. Yep. Yeah. Those are those are two guys that when you follow, you see them going out and competing very hard. So yeah. You know we've seen some games that we thought were supposed to be two nothing, two ones, three three, or you know three two games or something like that, and. Uh, um, who knows what we'll see with this wind? How many lefties have we seen? Oh man, every every. Oh my god! I, I feel like every time we've gone out on a Tuesday, we've at least had one lefty on the bump. If and and more times than not, it's been two. Guys, yeah, right? whether it's you know you had Deverman and Hatchman, uh, you've had Naputi out there, and I'm 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 going to the south because that's what I know the most, yeah. but. You know, yeah, that, and Hosack and uh, Cole, Aiden yep, Cole. Yep, from Liberty and, and, and Holt. Holt. Um, so, you know, Mulder talks about this several times, uh, how good this 2023 class is, and then the lefties that are out there. Yeah. And I don't, I don't remember 
at any point of my, and it's been a while that I've seen this many lefties uh, on the bump like they are. You know, we had Steve Callier back when I played, and he was in Burley. Those guys were, you know, some of the, the top arms there. Everybody else was right-handed. Absolutely. You know, because yeah. I, I, I guess now it's these lefties are now power arms instead of the crafty lefty that they used to be. You know, the guy that threw low 80s with a, a bunch of off-speed stuff. Now they're guys with mid, you know, mid 90s or upper 80s, and uh, they got some big time hammers. So maybe that's the difference because uh, they're being noticed a little bit more versus over the last 20 plus years of, of development here. But man, these lefties are legit. The class 2023 pitching staff is really good. Yeah, got Platte County at nine. Uh, Francis Borgia rounds out top 10. So, and then you got down here on deck Jeff City. Over in, in that, you know, Jefferson City. Uh, Festus. <laughs> you right? know. <laughs> Festus and Pacific down south. Um, so, look, you, you look at the top three teams southwest, the middle of the pack, St. Louis Metro. Uh, you have, and then you've got the middle of the state scattered in through there and then finishes with, uh, you know, St. Louis Metro with uh, Francis Borgia, Festus Pacific. So, those you see where where the 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 crux of the the baseball powers are in class five right now class six blue spring south 22 and three um that team is really good zumwalt west number two at 22 and six there's the other one today um howl and west facing off we're going to keep that up to date those teams uh, we'll we'll keep some scores because I think Washington uh, is uh, playing Holt I think as well this weekend. It's one of that. I think that's what that is. So there's going to be some interesting games today. This is going to really finish out the GAC. So I'm looking forward to it, Mitch. Yeah, that GAC South game. I think that has the implications on who's going to be your conference champion um, because they they've had some bad losses in between, um, and then you know I don't know where Fort Zumwalt. West is because you know they only had a couple losses just up to a couple weeks ago and then they seem to have a little bit of a I guess a losing streak if you will because they beat Blue Spring South yeah uh, early in the season Um, well both both, West is 22 and 6 Howell is 23 and 6 they're the number 5 team you got Liberty North in there Eureka is really good 25 and 2 in the 6 Vianney 23 and 4 Nixa which is Southwest uh, very good squad Jackson Marquette and then uh, CBC also receiving votes. They're number 11, basically. <laughs> I, just, I look at this, and I'm thinking about, like, our future shows, are, are, you know, going live streaming. We'll see CBC and Jackson again. Uh, next week. Uh, next week. And it's like, man, all of these top 10 programs, but they have, when you look at them, they have some absolute units. You know, we saw it the other day on Friday, how big uh, the Macon kid was uh, for Kirkwood. You know the the catcher for Webster Groves uh, and and uh, I, 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 Zara. It's not Zara. Um, Zara. 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 That that catcher from most that's going to most state. I mean, he's got a cannon. Oh my lord! Uh, if you are a fan of baseball and you want to see, I, I, I'm gonna say this all the time: from 12, 13, 14 years old, do whatever you can to go out and watch district play happen in these next couple weeks. Cause I think this is the last week for conference play. At least I know yes. that in the GACs. Yeah. Um, I, th- th- district watching, play will start in a couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, the, it's just, to me, it's wow. I, I the athletic ability by these outfielders and infielders, the pitching ability that we're seeing guys that are competing very hard, upper eighties, um, right-handed, left-handed bullpen relief, you name it. Um, is it an exciting year for high school baseball? And you have got to take your kids out there and watch. It's free for the most part. Watch uh, YBM cast if you can't get out to the ballpark. You know, we got a great pitching matchup. Uh, Carter Cox, more than likely. These are the probables. Probables. Carter Cox, Lucas McGill. Um, going to be a fun one. Mitch is going to be out there on the call with us as long as his hay fever stays in Oh, town. man. I know it's tough. The last three days uh, have been brutal. And uh, but we're going to be out there. So a little short shot there. We got. Uh, we want to just do that real quick. We'll have the game seven tournament wrap up show on tomorrow. Um, thanks for tuning in, stopping by. Make sure you tune in four o'clock this afternoon for the pregame show. 
And uh, we'll see you guys at the ballpark. I'm excited.